All right, we're in design. So in design, you'll notice looks a lot like Photoshop and Illustrator. It didn't used to be the case in some of the lower versions. They each looked separate, which made moving from one to another kind of terrifying. But we don't have to worry about that now. I like this what's new thing, uh, window that pops up, because you can kind of slide along and see some of the big things that have changed, especially with Adobe Color and the color theme. That can that might become important to you. And I am very interested in doing this um, interactive PDFs that with hyperlinks and slideshows. Um, in these little videos, you can take a couple minutes to check it out. So here's an example of checking it out. You can click on this little video and it will tell you about InDesign. Standard publishing application for print publication, That's weird. interactive PDF documents. It seems weird to play a video within a video because I feel like I'm incepted, so we won't do that. <laughs> but I wanted you to see that you have resources straight off the bat, okay? So let's, let's look here. In design, a couple of things you need to know. I know you guys are ter terrible. Preferences are under in design. I'll show you when that's going to get confusing for you. File, new, let's make a new document. Okay, and we want to see all of our options. We can preview it if we want to. I'll show you. Um, yeah, it's well, it's a print. It's a print term. Yeah. So we have the document presets. If we make a preset, we could also we could import a preset. Our intent is for print. You can also design web pages in here. And I would say if you were going to do a blog or something like that, that you should lay it out and work with the elements in InDesign before going in and actually using Muse or Dreamweaver because this gives you um, a lot of fluid control to move things around and see what you like best. We're going to choose print. We're going to choose uh, facing pages so that when we have pages two and three, they're facing each other. Um, number of pages. In this case, I'm going to make three. Start page will be number one. Page size is letter. Now, this is PICAs. And you might not be, you might not speak PICA, right? So we can change that. I'm going to hit cancel and go back up to InDesign preferences, units, and increments. And straight away, I want my ruler increments to be, uh, for the spread, to be in inches. Now I leave it in points for a stroke or a type or a font, right? Because I'm not going to work, work with type in like inches. Um, so leave that. But ruler uh, units for the spread, inches and inches. Good. So let's go back to file new document. And you'll see now it's in inches. Um, so we've got our margins. Right, which are the purple line around here, and that just it's all the way around is half an inch. Looks good. Um, the gutter is the space between columns, right? So if we wanted a bigger gutter or a smaller gutter, in this case, let's keep half an inch gutter. Actually, that's kind of a gigantic gutter, so let's make it that big. Um, we can change the margins if we want to, and you see they're all changing together because of this little link. If you don't want them to do that, break the link. I think the default is pretty good. Now the bleed, if you're working with graphics, you want to add a bleed. And I usually add 0.25 and then hit tab and it will apply that throughout. Okay, And you'll see the bleed is that red line. And what that is, is if you're working with graphics that you want to go off the page, you can't simply butt them up against this black line, which is the page edge. You have to butt them up next to the red. Or when things are cut, you will have a thin white line going through your graphic. Um, so if you're doing business cards or page, you know, page layout or whatever, if a graphic has, is going to look like it goes off the page or you want a color to go off the page, it has to go to the bleed. And then the slug is where you can leave notes for the printer. All right? In this case, I'm not going to worry too much about that. I don't really need a slug and I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to close this down. So much like the other two programs, we have our toolbar here, our fill and our stroke. The tools that we're going to use to select are our type tool, our rectangle frame tool, and up at the top, we've got our option bar. The panels I like to have out are pages, and that will show you the amount of pages. And here we have one page. If I wanted more pages, I can go down to the bottom and create more. 
Now say on the third page, I have a circle, and I want that third page to be the first page. I can grab it and drag it. You see the little arrow hand? It'll say, do you want it to go this way? Do you want it to go that way? You want it to go up to the top. So when you're designing, if you need to change pages around, I, honestly, I use this for, I don't do PowerPoint anymore. Or, what I do is I will create it in here and export it to JPEGs um, or export it to a PDF. So I do everything in here. I really like how I can say, oh, I want this slide up here. Um, and it's a great presentation. We will talk about master pages and how you can place elements on master pages that will apply to every page. For example, say on our master page, we have a polygon, All right? So I'm gonna select that one. Okay. That means no matter how many, oops, don't do what I just did. I added a bunch of extra. So if I add pages, you'll notice that every one on the left has that polygon because that is what is, was assigned to it in the master. This is great for adding your name or something that you know you're going to want to be on every page. Like so a border, a border, any page elements, some, I like to put little you know, lines or um, yeah, anything I know I want to be on there. You can make several masters. So if you know you want your name to be on every page, but sometimes you want to change it up so the name's a different color, you can have an A master and a B master, right? It's really it's kind of amazing what you can do with it. So that's just some of the stuff. So I like to have the pages out. If you don't want a page, just select it, drag it to the trash. I also like to have links out. This is the hard lesson about InDesign, and I want you all to learn it today. Let's go File, Save As, and we'll save this as an example. And where I'm gonna save this is in a folder. You will turn things in, in InDesign, in folders. All of the images, Word docs you reference, tech, um, sorry, fonts, everything needs to be in that folder because things are not automatically embedded. And if you embed a lot of large files, it'll become really unwieldy. And one of the great things about InDesign is that you can just have those files in the folder. So I'm gonna save it as an INDD, InDesign, and save. Now, in the next video, we're going to talk about bringing over some assets and how we have to structure our folder.